Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be trying to fix this locomotive. Um, this is actually, a, uh, I believe it's a Hornby trying or uh, maybe just trying a Davy Crockett locomotive. You know, the kind from the old uh, Western movies. Uh, I got this locomotive for free, actually, in that lot a few months ago, and a lot of people really seem to show interest in it. Um, it's in really bad shape. I mean, uh, we've got no motor, no transmission, um, no drive rods, the chassis is in two pieces. All we've got is a shell, this, and uh, yeah, the, the driving wheels, and uh, most of the chassis, I guess. So we're in, we're gonna be trying to kind of restore this thing to at least kind of cosmetic condition, because it is cool looking locomotive, because I'm very doubtful we'll be able to get it running. But we're gonna try to get it running anyway. So first of all, let's sort out the first problem and possibly the biggest problem, which is the split chassis. This thing has a lot of problems. Let me show you in detail. So this thing was obviously involved in some sort of incident. Uh, this uh, is obviously split, but if we look kind of sideways here, you can see the metal doesn't actually really line up that well. You can see it's kind of even on the bottom, but not on the top, and that's because this is actually, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but that's bent in right there. Uh, and the second kind of issue is that these wheels are very uneven. I can barely turn these. Uh, and that's because you can see the one there on the left is especially, well, they're both kind of bent, really, on both sides. So those problems need to get sorted out. This whole thing reminds me a lot of my Hiawatha, which had a very similar problem, which was a chassis broken up into multiple pieces. Um, in this case, it's only one break, so I think it's uh, a little bit more likely than the Hiawatha will be able to fix up the chassis. But um, again, it might just be a cosmetic uh, repair. So let's try to fix this chassis and to start doing that I guess we'll try to bend that metal back into place. Now possibly with good reason some people might not see this as the wisest way to unbend the metal but I don't know uh, how else I'm gonna do it so we're gonna try to basically uh, crimp it back into place using this vise. Now bending this piece of metal over the vise definitely did straighten it out but you can see this whole segment here is slightly bent in. So we're gonna take these pliers and we're just going to try to wiggle that back out by doing this. And you can see it's widened it a bit. Now I'll check for fit. And now here I am just holding it up and you can see they're now the same width. It's not perfect but that's partially just because I'm just holding it on uh, and only holding it with one hand. So with the proper pressure this should fit about perfect. So we've now got two halves which might fit together quite well but unfortunately we need a way to bond them together, and we've got a lot of options, but I think I'm going to use the uh, thing I trust most, which is super glue. It's pretty strong in these cases, and it should bond the two metals pretty well together. There might be a better way to do this, but uh, I'm pretty confident that if it's held firmly together, it will be fine. And to uh, hold it firmly together, we've got uh, this big old vise. Now, generally, as these things go, uh, the glue sets very quickly, so we're going to set this thing up in the vise before we uh, start gluing everything. That way we don't have to make too many maneuvers. And there are these like little ledges, sort of, uh, on the bottoms of the trucks. You can see kind of like right there in that area. So we're going to set this up, and then we're going to uh, kind of just tighten that. I'm going to tighten it until we get it to the right a distance so that puts pressure on it right there so now we have to take this out put some glue on it and hope that we can get it in place while the glue dries I really like these super glue bottles because they've got this big brush so you can put uh, you know a good amount like so and in this case we're gonna really put a liberal coating and make sure that we get it nice and even because there are some little gaps uh, and you want those to fill in to get the best structural integrity so we'll put that there I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the music if you can hear it and that would be a courtesy of my sister all right, so I think that <laughs> I think that that's about uh, about right there. Okay, so I'm just get that in the right position there. Tighten down a bit. I'm just 
just gonna kind of just keep working it into the right spot there. Maybe a bit more pressure. All right, so that should be good. Now I just need to let it dry for a while. All right, it's now been a while, and we're gonna take this out very gently. Hopefully, it holds together. I'm just gonna put it there to finish drying. There we go. Now I'm gonna try adding a bit of oil. Not much. Just try working that kind of and as for this we'll try and just putting a bit of oil down there. Hopefully that will make it into the spots it's supposed to. It's already turning better. Wow, look at that. It's spinning. Good, good, good. All right, seems to be pretty happy with that lubricant. You can see the wheels are turning freely. The middle one won't because it's not actually uh, touching because it doesn't have a flange. But uh, I mean, it's it's moving. Not too bad. All right, so we're now going to try to attach the pilot wheels, and uh, there's a little screw right here on the front. And luckily, uh, even though this is disconnected, whenever this popped off, the original owner put the screw back in, uh, which is something I would advise uh, if you, if a truck or something pops off a piece of your equipment and you don't know how to reinstall it, because uh, maybe you've lost the washers or something for it, put the screw back into the locomotive, even if you don't reattach the truck, because uh, you're a lot less likely to lose it. When I was a kid, uh, I had a caboose, and the truck popped off. It had some washers. I couldn't find them, but I put the screw back in. And three years later, I was able to reconnect the truck because I still had the original screw. Now, in this case, the washers might have just popped out. And uh, I happen to have these replacement washers right here. Let's see if I can kind of show them to you guys. They're just basic, like, hobby washers. Uh, my hobby shop sells them in packages. I think they're made by Katie, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, that should... Uh, close the gap between the screw and the truck because right now this can just go right over the screw head So it's no use right now. So we're going to put that in like so And Tighten that down there Starting to look kind of like a locomotive. So, yeah, at least we've got that on. I'll put some oil in this as well. And this does turn, but it's not the best, so I'll try putting some oil on it. Hopefully, it will free up whatever's uh, going on here. And also, don't. Uh, uh, I've been applying very liberal quantities of oil. What I'm trying to do primarily is just get it to kind of basically penetrate into uh, the bearings. If you're doing maintenance on a locomotive, you don't want to put this much oil, but since it's an old one and we're just trying to get everything moving, yeah, I'll put a little more. And yeah, that's already turning a little better. So at this point, we've got this whole assembly basically done. So at this point, this should be able to fit over it if we just do a little bit of adjustment there. And that's roughly how it should look. Obviously, it needs to be lifted a bit so it doesn't drag on the wheels. but we now have a big choice. We've now got it to a state where it's almost cosmetically good. However, we might be able to get it running if we have the parts. So let's go to my parts bin and see if we have parts. Because if we have the parts, I would like to see if we can get this thing moving. I doubt we can, but why not? All right, let's see what kind of spare parts we have here. Uh, the two things we need, we need a motor and a transmission. I already know the motor I think I want to put in it. It's this old Atherin one. These are very reliable motors, and it's a five pole, and it should not It should be compact enough to fit. It might not, but uh, we don't have a lot of options. Um, as for a transmission, I'm not sure. We do have a transmission in this old kind of steam locomotive. That might work. We've got a transmission the worm gear in this diesel. So, oh, I've also got one in here. Why don't we try the one in here, because this locomotive, this isn't really a locomotive, it's more just a frame with a few parts still on it. All right, so first things first, let's see what kind of transmission we've got in here. 
All right, so there's that part, and this should just drop out. Well, that's not too shabby. It's a bit big though. I don't think that's gonna fit. All right, so that's not gonna work. Let's try to find something else. 